So, that means now I what I am interested in is now to find out. So, we have already figured out now what pressure is, we understand a lot about pressure, we still do not know enough about velocity and we can figure that out if we integrate this equation because this is a is this now a partial differential equation or a uh, ordinary differential equation? It is an ODE, you know how to solve it, you can go ahead and solve it. So, it is a second derivative and because this is a constant, I can simply integrate it as d du by d y is equal to 1 by mu times d p by d x plus uh, times y plus a constant c 1 and u is equal to 1 by mu d p by d x into y square by 2 plus c 1 y plus c 2, right. So, that is what uh, my velocity field is going to be and uh, c 1 and c 2 will be the constants that are coming out of integration and you have to find that out from the boundary conditions, okay. And you know what those boundary conditions are, right. We already wrote it down we had written it down as uh, somewhere there, u at walls, right. So, that means walls is either at y is equal to 0 and let us say some y is equal to h, where h will be the width of the channel now. So, let us define all those things. So, that is my, um, okay, let us make another picture. <coughs> so, that was my original wall that is what I called as x, this is what I am calling as y, let us say that is equal to h. So, this wall is y is equal to 0, this is y is equal to h and when y is equal to 0, you know u is equal to 0 at y is equal to h also that is going to be 0. Hmm? Now, let us do a slightly different problem because um, that is that will do you know two things in one go. So, what I am going to do now is that the same problem. So, what we have done really is that you have applied a pressure gradient. In other words, you have applied a large pressure here. For example, you know you will put a pipe pump, okay, you put a pump that will exert a large pressure here which will move the fluid in the channel, right. So, along with that let us say that you are not only uh, applying a pressure gradient, you are also going to move this upper plate. So, this upper plate is going to go with a velocity capital U. What would that do? That can also drive the fluid, right? Because you take fluid between two plates, you are moving one of the plate, the fluid will automatically move. So, that basic basically what I am trying to say is that there are two ways of moving fluids typically. One is that you put a you know pump, in other words you apply a pressure gradient which can generate a flow or you move one of the boundaries okay, like this and then it will also drive a flow. Okay. So, we are looking at a situation now where you have applied a pressure gradient as well as you are moving a boundary okay, and then let us calculate what is the velocity profile and see you know uh, how the di how different those velocity profiles are going to be. Hmm, is that clear? So, I am changing the gear a little bit now. So, so, that is the situation. So, we know that so, so far, so till writing down that equation, we only cared about the, um, uh, so we did not really impose the boundary condition. Only thing that I am doing is by imposing u is equal to, you know, capital U at y is equal to h, I have just changed the boundary condition. So, this equation whatever we have derived so far should remain um, uh, so, right. Is that clear? Okay, so, I am going to use that and apply these boundary conditions. Can you calculate C 1 and C 2 now? So, you have a fluid which is driven by a pressure gradient, okay, whose velocity profile is going to be this, but it is also that fluid is in between the plates and one of the plate is moving with a certain velocity capital U. So, the fact that at y is equal to 0, 
u is equal to 0 implies c 2 equal to c 2 equal to 0 and then the only non trivial boundary condition is that y is equal to h u is equal to capital U. So, I can say that capital U is equal to 1 by mu d p by d x h square by 2 plus c 1 h and that gives me c 1 is equal to u by h minus 1 by mu d p by d x h square by 2 which means now I can substitute what is that? What mistake did I do? Oh, there is an H here. So, this is uh, gone. Okay. Correct? So, that means my um, U is going to be 1 by mu d p by d x y square by 2 plus U by H minus 1 by mu d p by d x h square by 2 times y and that is equal to 1 by mu d p by d x. Oh, I again made the mistake this is h d p by d x um, into y square by 2 minus h y by 2 plus u y divided by h. Is this correct? Okay. So, that is the velocity profile in this case. So, d p by d x will it be greater than 0 or less than 0? Yeah. So, you can, uh, so if you want to recognize the fact that d p by d x is less than 0 and write down this quantity as uh, minus d p by d x, this term will reverse. Okay, and that is typically the way you would write it. Let us see different cases now. Case 1 d p by d x is equal to 0. If d p by d x equal to 0 means you have not applied any pressure gradient, only the top plate is moving, what velocity profile would you get? Oops. So, you find that u is equal to u y divided by h. Okay. So, that means I have a plate, this was my y is equal to 0 and this was my y is equal to h. At y is equal to 0, u is equal to 0. Here, this plate is moving with a capital velocity u. So, at y is equal to capital H, u is indeed equal to capital u. So, it has some finite velocity and the variation is linear. So, that means my velocity profile is going to look like that, right? And that is something that you have already seen probably. And this flow is known as okay, one of the simplest flow fields that you can get. Okay. And uh, this is uh, very important in terms of determining viscosity and so on, this particular flow field. And you will see that uh, probably next week and week after, how do we utilize this further. So, case 2, u equal to 0. So, that means, and d p by d x is not equal to 0. So, that it means you have imposed a pressure gradient, but you are keeping the wall velocity uh, 0. So, it is two stationary plates, you have fluid in between and you have imposed a pressure gradient. So, what does uh, u come out as? So, that goes away, it just remains that. So, let us write it as 
1 by 2 mu times minus d p by d x times h y minus y square. Is that correct? So, you have played y is equal to 0, y is equal to h, you have applied a pressure gradient d p by d x is less than 0. Okay. So, because pressure will be larger pressure, here smaller pressure and fluid is flowing from larger pressure to smaller pressure and the flow profile is going to look like this at y is equal to 0 u is 0 at y is equal to h u is again going to be 0 somewhere in between it is going to be a maximum and that maximum can only be at the center then. So, it will look like that okay, a parabolic velocity profile. So, this flow is known as plane pose of flow. Okay. Yeah, doubts? So, it is the same thing. So, if you have a, so, so in this case what you are asking is that you have generated a flow field in which case there can already be a pressure difference. Okay. So, it is a, so because, so if you look at this equation, we ended up saying so that one. Okay. It says that a pressure gradient generates a fluid flow that is what I interpreted it as or you could say that yes there is a flow that will generate a pressure gradient and the way we typically do it is we apply a force and get a motion. We do not say that we actually get a motion and because of that that force existed which is an equivalent uh, description but it is probably less physical than interpreting it the other way. Okay. So, flow will be typically associated with a pressure variation or a pressure variation would generate a flow and yeah. So, why do you neglect the gravity in the biomomentum equation? Uh, you could, so right now I am looking at a um, um, pipe that is actually perpendicular to the gravity. Okay. So, the only thing that would have happened is that there can be hydrostatic pressure that is perpendicular to this. Okay. So, in reality that would mean that when we said this quantity right d p by d y is really rho g if you wanted to include that. So, the pressure will split into two parts pressure will have a hydrostatic part which will balance the you know gravity force and then there is a pressure variation in the x direction which is going to balance the viscous forces. Does that make sense? Because hydrostatic pressure will not generate a flow. So, it is just that uh, you know uh, just that fact that is why we do not care about gravity at all. Gravity is in the y direction. So, so, so the yeah you can and what that will give you is that pressure will just come out to be rho g y which will have nothing to do with what we do next. Okay, P is only a function of y. We did not care because I am saying that. So, re, this pressure really can be interpreted as the total pressure minus the hydrostatic pressure. P is, but we know everything about what is it in y. P is just so see the y. So, we have a uniform channel. So, okay. So, therefore, any point that you take if pressure is varying that is just according to this. 
what is interesting for us is what is happening in that direction, which is what we did not know, which is what we calculated. So, now you could if you like you could expand by saying that okay, I am going to add my rho g x term here, I will add my rho g y term here, which would give me d p by d y is equal to rho g y, where I am only talking now my g x is 0, I only have g y which gives me p is equal to rho g y. Okay. So, that is what I am saying that the pressure has two components now, one is due to gravity, the other is due to flow. What we have calculated is the pressure due to the flow, not due to gravity. Okay. So, in some, so this pressure, so let us do it this way, let us say that this is some, let us I think this is called a dynamic pressure, that means we have already removed the hydrostatic part from it. So, we will call it a P d then it is ok and that is because gravity will not do anything. But if you were looking at a pipe which is perpendicular to gravity, then you should have been careful because these two components will add up in the same direction now. Okay. So, we will see uh, how to, so see that is exactly what you do it in um, uh, Bernoulli's equation, you have a pressure head, you have a velocity head, you can have a gravity head, right. If you talk about a pipe in a, you know, in a horizontal direction, then there is nothing gravity will do, okay. Gravity will not generate any velocity, but if it was in the perpendicular direction or in the direction that is parallel to gravity, then gravity could induce a flow and which we will see how we will write down gravity included in terms of uh, pressure field and so on at a later point. So, at the moment let us just say that either we have a situation in which our flow is perpendicular to gravity and therefore, the hydrostatic pressure is not going to do anything. Anything else? Okay. Oh, I need to do two more cases. So, the next case, can you draw now um, case? U is not equal to 0, d p by d x is less than 0 and case 4, u not equal to 0, d p by d x greater than 0 you can um, uh, plot and then come back next class.